Hey everybody, today Rado talks through Istanbul, Mocha, and Bakshish, which is a new expansion to the Kennerspiel des Jahres winner Istanbul. For those who don't know, the Kennerspiel is the most prestigious award in all of board gamedom, and Istanbul won in 2014. This is a big deal. This is a very well respected game, and now it gets its first expansion, which is all about the coffee and the bribery, I guess, Bakshish. And I am going to be doing a quick demonstration of what the new features are. Now, this demonstration assumes you know how to play regular Istanbul. If not, you can hit the little eye up in the top right corner of the screen and you can go watch the run through I did so you can learn regular Istanbul or you get an idea of what it's like. Then you can come back here and have a better understanding or contextual understanding of what this adds to the game. But let's start talking about what this adds to the game. Right off the bat, fans of Istanbul might notice the board has gotten bigger. Our marketplace has gone from a 4x4 16 times tile market to a 4x5 20 tile market because we have added four new tiles all related to coffee. The roasting plant, the guild hall, the tavern, and the coffee house. Now of course these all get scattered around randomly. I just went on ahead and put them right there in the middle. There's a couple other things. But before I start talking about what these tiles do, the, two of the old tiles have been upgraded as well. The Wainwright, you know, where you go to get your wagon wheels, your, your wagon expansions, has been replaced. Here's the original one. Here is the new one. Pretty much exactly the same thing, but you'll notice one slight difference. Hey, there's an icon up here. Because now the Wainwright, because it has this icon, can be subject to certain new special powers that have been added into the card deck. Let's see if I can find one. Basically, the main one, or the one I know of, is when you go to the Wainwright, if you have this card, you could buy two upgrades at once, much the same way you could do two gemstone dealer upgrades or whatnot. So that's a pretty big deal and it makes the wagon upgrades a bit more palatable, which is quite nice. The other change to an existing tile is the uh, caravansary, which here's the old one, here's the new one, only difference. Hey, you still get two cards and discard one like normal, but now you pick up some coffee while you're here, which makes this a much more attractive tile than it used to be. So, that's the old. Let's talk about the new, these four tiles. The all of them, in one way or another, have something to do with a new resource in the game. Coffee. And now coffee does not count as a good in a traditional sense. It is not like the jewelry, the uh, textiles, the spices, and the fruits because you can have as much of this as you can carry. You're not limited by your wagon size. So you can collect tons of this stuff. You can really hoard this stuff if you want. Now, Going to a, a, maybe the most immediate, obvious use for this coffee is, in addition to getting rubies, because we're racing to get rubies at the gemstone dealer with money, or over at the Sultan's Palace with a variety of goods, you can come to the coffee house and get rubies by spending more and more coffee. The first one costs six coffee, and then seven, eight, nine, ten, and uh, yeah. So, there's new ways to get ruby if you focus on coffee. And uh, you can get coffee over the uh, caravansary. There's a new guy who runs around in addition to the governor and the smuggler. The smuggler, where's the governor? The, the, the governor who give you cards and goods, there is now also this coffee peddler who, if you run into him as he zips around the board, will let you buy coffee, either by spending money or giving up one good. So you can get coffee from him. You can get coffee from the car caravansary. You can get coffee. The, the main way you can get coffee, however, is the roasting plant. Let's zoom in a little bit so you can see these a bit better. That's why I put them in the middle of the board. Hey there. Hey, roasting plant. So, if you come over to the roasting plant, you can get two to six coffee, bags of coffee, uh, by spending two bucks to get two bags of coffee, giving up a, a, a good of your choice for two coffee, or giving up any card for two coffee. If you go there with extra money, goods, and a card, you can get six coffee all at once, which is enough to get your first a ruby from the coffee house. So the roasting plant's pretty straightforward. It is a, there's a smorgasbord of coffee to be had there. Next up, we've got the guild hall. And you know, let's, take, let's actually play a couple of rounds so I can show you how some of these things work. So here we are. I'm the first player. Got my first player marker. And I will go one, two, since it's within reach, to activate the guild hall. Now, when you come to the guild hall, you get some coffee. Yay, I got coffee. 
Now, one coffee isn't really enough to do anything. You need really at least, well, actually that's not true. Early in the game, one coffee can be useful, but generally you need at least two coffee to do something of use. So I got me some coffee, yay! And I get to draw two of these guild cards and then return one of them. So, these are an entirely new system. These cards are crazy powerful. They are much, much, much more powerful than the bonus cards from the original game. Even though there's, and there's a bunch of new bonus cards that have been added as well, but these guild cards are crazy powerful. Let's just look at these two. Let's see. Oh, and they have German or English on them. So, if I play this card, I can pay any six goods, but not coffee, and take the next ruby from the Sultan's Palace. And I could do that from anywhere. So, when I'm good, when goods are, when the Sultan's Palace is getting really, really expensive, I can just play this and any six goods. Heck, I don't need jewelry. I could just um, use this with a bunch of fruit and spice and grab, you know, a super expensive gem near the end of the game if I wanted. That crazy powerful. Here's another one. Take one free wheelbarrow extension from the Wainwright and add it to your wheelbarrow. Not having to pay the normal seven bucks and not having to traipse all the way over in this particular game, all the way down to the, to the southeast from anywhere on the board. If I play this, I can um, get a wheelbarrow for free. That's a huge deal too. So, you know, which of these am I going to take? These are tough. How about that? Maybe I'll, I'll, I want to get a wheelbarrow relatively early. Um, you know, I mean, these are hard. Every time you draw two of these, it's going to be it's going to be a tough, tough decision which one to take. But let's say I take the wheelbarrow because I really want to have a wheelbarrow early on. So the other one goes back. Now, the thing is, this is an incredibly powerful card, but there is a restriction. To play this, I have to forfeit an entire turn. Um, I can't move. I can't have any encounters. All I can do is this. So, um, you know, you really got to wait for the timing to be right. Um, but anyway, so I've, I've got this card on a future... I can't do it this turn, but on a future turn, I could play this. Right, so let's say I did that. And now, um, let's continue. Let's say Jen, she just goes over one, two, and just fills up some fruit like normal. Right? Nice and simple thing. Now, my next turn, let's uh, say... Yeah, let's say I'm going to come up here to the roasting plant like I was talking about. And, you know, I started the game with two bucks, so I'll go ahead and spend two bucks to get two coffee. Now that's not much, but now I've got a total of three delicious bags of coffee. And I just threw my third one. I don't see where it disappeared to. I literally picked up a third one. It is... Wow, that's weird. I'll just grab another one. So, I have three bags of coffee now. And so, and I didn't interrupt... Uh, you know, I, and I didn't have any goods. I could give up this bonus card I got, but no way. This is way too powerful. I could give it up to get two more coffee, but that would be insane. And then Jen, let's say, she's just doing... She's doing some normal stuff. She comes over here and gets some spices. And now, here's the thing. It's my turn again, and I notice... Which, something I didn't notice at the beginning of the game because I was so excited to go off and get a guild card and, and do coffee stuff. Whereas Jen spotted, hey, look at this really great loop. The fruit and the spice are right next to the small market. This is an incredible money-making thing. Get some fruit, get some spice, sell at the market. Get some fruit, get some spice, sell at the market. This is what Istanbul is all about. Finding really good loops that you can use to get a lot of stuff. I mean, Jen's going to get 14 bucks and then she can, do, and, you know, she can recall her guys. This is a really great jump start for her, and she kind of owns it now. I mean, I could jump in on the tail end and follow her, um, but I've got another option, and it has to do with the tavern. So let's say I'm going to come down here, one, two, and of course i got to drop a guy off to activate it. Now, here at the tavern, I can do one of three things. I have a choice, uh, and they all require me spending coffee. And remember, I have picked up three delicious bags of coffee. So, I can spend two coffee to erect a barricade somewhere on the board. This barricade, which will interfere with Jen's movement, but not mine. Because at the same time I erect this, and this becomes a barrier that you cannot move through, I also grab this, which is a pass, which means wherever this is, I can walk through it. So, now that's going to cost me two coffee. Instead, I could spend four coffee and three fruit and immediately take a ruby from any of the three ruby spaces on the board. For four coffee, and I've, I've got three coffee, just one more coffee, and then if I pick up three fruit, of course now I can't pick up three fruit until I get at least one wheelbarrow, but remember, I could get a wheelbarrow really quickly and easily. 
So, but that's a really powerful way. It gives you a ton of flexibility. Four coffee plus three fruit. This is the back sheesh tile. You have to, you know, this is the bribe um, over here at the tavern with the four coffee and the three fruit. I could take the top gemstone. I could take the top from the coffee house. I could take the top from the Sultan's Palace. And you know, early on, that's maybe not the greatest return in the world. But near the end of the game, when things get so much more expensive, require so many more goods, this doesn't ever get more expensive. So this becomes more and more attractive as the game goes on. Now, it's an interesting thing. Thing. Once I use this, if I used four coffee and three fruit and you know took a gem from anywhere, then it flips. And now the next time somebody comes here, they have to give up four coffee, one fabric, one spice, and one jewelry. So it's a little bit trickier. Now you need more variety. But then after you do that, you flip it again and it's fruit. So this is constantly flipping. And you'll notice this is a nice little combo too. I mean, if you spend the early portion of the game collecting a lot of coffee, you can just like hop back and forth between here if you've got at least one wheelbarrow. Get the fruit you need, do it, and then if you've, um, well, then it's going to flip. And to be used your next batch of coffee, you'll have to pick up some, you know, jewelry and you know, some of the other goods. But the backsheesh is interesting. The third choice you can use here is spend a variable amount of coffee to get one of the two new coffee upgrade tiles. Now these are like the tiles from the small mosque and the, the big mosque, the great mosque. There's two of them. And the first player to get one of these only has to spend one coffee. Then the next player has to spend two and then three and then four. So they get progressively more expensive. If you grab this tile, you, whenever you have an encounter with any of the three guys, the governor, the uh, smuggler, or the coffee dealer, you can get the stuff from them without having to pay. So that makes chasing after the, these guys, wherever they move around the board, much more enticing because you don't have to spend money to get the goods off of them. So that's really cool, but arguably even cooler. Since the board has gotten bigger now and it's going to take longer to travel around, you've got this speedy travel option. What, which, you know, if I, if, so if I come, I just come here, I could spend one coffee to get this. And it means from now on, instead of being limited to only moving two spaces on my turn, I can move as far as I want from one side of the board to the other in one move, but it has to be a straight line. So that's really awesome too, because then from here, heck, I could get all the way over to the tea house. Um, you know, and then from the tea house, I could get all the way over to the, uh, the caravansary. You can move super fast. This is a very attractive tile. So I've just come here, and I might be very, very enticed to um, spend one coffee to get that speed, but uh, I'm going to spend two of my coffee and use this blockade thing. I'm going to deploy the blockade. Where did it go? I picked it up. I showed it to the camera, and it has disappeared into the eighth dimension. Buckaroo Banzai, where is it? Oh, here it is. Okay. Ha <laughs> ha. Right. So I get to deploy this now. I get to have the pass, which means this won't stop me. All the other players have to walk around it. They can't walk through it. This doesn't stop me. And wherever I put this, I put it in between two tiles, and I immediately get the benefit of one of those tiles. So what am I going to do? Well, I know what Jen wants to do, so I think I'm going to put it right here. And now Jen's plan was to come south to the small market, but now she can't. Now she's got to go the long way around to get to the small market. So I've just blocked her. Plus, I immediately get to do one of these things. What the heck? I'll go on ahead and take two fruit. Uh, no, no, no. I'll, I'll take two um, uh, spice as an example. So I got that. I've blocked Jen. And now I could take over this loop, and I could do it without interruption. Although. And, and, and there's nothing Jen can do about it. Until she fought, picks up two coffee of her own and comes back over here, then she could um, deploy this elsewhere. Or heck, she could redeploy it to the same place, and then it would be her path. So this actually performs. It's a slight screwage factor. Um, well, it, there's two things. It's useful because, you know, much like getting your nephew out of jail, and letting, sending him off to the far side of the world, you could use this to go off to the far side of the world and do some action. But the much more important use of it, of course, is blocking somebody when you see that, heck, they're about to get somewhere that you want to get to or you want to interrupt the perfect you know, pattern that they've developed for themselves, put this down, and that can really mess up their day. So that's what you do at the tavern. It's a quick way to, and you'll, if you can see somebody was about to get a really expensive gemstone, they've just paid, and they don't have enough money for the next one, head over here at Bakshish, grab that one right out from underneath them, and now they've got to pay more than they thought they did. So you can really upset people that way. And so anyway, now Jen's like, ah, okay, well, she can't go south to sell to the small market as she had hoped. So what is she going to do? I guess she will go one, two, she'll come over here to the uh, roasting plant herself.
And let's see, she's, she'll pay two bucks to get two coffee, and she'll give up one of her goods. Uh, she'll give up a, uh, a fruit to get two more coffee. So now Jen's got four coffee. And if she, if she had a little bit more, she could actually get, um, you, know, you know, do the backsheesh and get a gem. Oh, you know, but more importantly, she could now change the stuff or, you know, I mean, she could, with a little bit more coffee, she could get a gem down here. So coffee gives you a lot of flexibility. So let's say Jen did that. Now, let's say I've got another problem. I really, um, now that I've got, you know, I, I say I wanted to come back to the roasting plant, but I can't because I don't have money and I'd have to spend money to get in there. That's a problem, right? Well, that's no good. So what do I do about it? Or even more so, let's say I have identified that, you know what, Jen just got this coffee. She wants to come down here to the tavern, spend the coffee, and move that blockade. Either way, say I wanted to get to her, but she's in the way and I don't want to have to pay her money. Or I know she wants to come down here and I'm currently in the way. And I know if I move away that she'll be able to get to the tavern as she wants to. And if, whereas if I were here, I would be blocking her because she doesn't have enough money to pay. Remember, um, so this is where this handy dandy little guild card comes in. It's my turn. Let's say I decide not to move. I decide to stand still, either to wait for Jen to get out of the way or to block Jen from where she wants to go. I'll, pay the, I'll play this card right now. Uh, take one free wheelbarrow extension from the Wayne Wright and add it. So, boom, I just got, and it didn't cost me seven bucks. I didn't have to traipse all the way down over here. And my turn is over. So, this is gone. I don't remember if it goes back to the bottom of the, or if it's out of the game. I'd have to go look that up. But anyway. My turn's over. Now, Jen was planning to come down here, move this barricade, and she can't. And so, these cards are crazy powerful because of the abilities they give you, but they are also crazy powerful if you use them at the right time so that you can wait for a little bit till somebody gets out of your way, or so you can stand in somebody's way because now Jen's got all this coffee, but she can't come down here because she can't afford to get in. So I have upset her plans once more. And so what's she going to do? Well, I guess she'll just maybe come over here to the police station and send her nephew down here. So, um, which of course is going to potentially benefit me because now I can return that nephew to the police station and all that stuff. So, that's just a really quick little example of what these four new tiles, plus this new good coffee, plus these new speedy tiles, you know, um, plus several, there are a bunch. I mean, where's the rules? I think that'd be the easiest way to show it. Oh, do I have the Here they go. There are, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine new bonus tiles as well. Most of them, you know, having to do with collecting coffee or manipulating coffee. Uh, this one's a kind of wild card. Roll two dice and take, you know, whatever reward. So get rewards, but you don't know what you get here, so it's more opportunities to roll dice. This is an awesome one. Exchange up to three goods, including coffee. Normally you don't include coffee. So it's a, here's a new symbol for all the goods. Instead of four, it's five. Exchange up to three goods for three other goods. Change three fruit into three jewels. What an incredible, awesome thing. Um, here is, uh, after you roll your dice, you can turn one of them into a six, pretty much guaranteeing a really big payout at the tea house or the black market. Uh, instead of moving your merchant by one or two, uh, move him to, uh, basically move him to the far corner anywhere on the board, get to do two Wainwright actions instead of one. And if you're in the coffee house, get to do two coffee house actions. So you get those bonuses. And I mean, there are a bunch of new guild powers. Every one of these things is phenomenally powerful if you're willing to give up an entire turn, which in a race game is painful. But if you can wait until the time is right for you to give up a turn because it blocks somebody else's movement, or it, what, you wait till somebody gets out of your way, then it's not really too much of a pain to give up a turn to play one of these superpowers. And that's it, folks. That is just a sneak peek of what you get in Istanbul Mocha and Bakshish. And now, if you'd like to hear some final thoughts, you can just little eye up in the corner or you know, follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.